Echo Season 1 Episode 5 Thoughts. This episode is called Maya. Spoilers for everything I'm seeing leading up to it, including this episode, another episode I love. And yeah, really appreciate that, you know, each episode, I'm not the first person to notice this, but yeah, each episode is named for one of Maya's ancestors, except the finale, which is named after her. You know, it is. We've gotten bits and pieces of their stories, the the you know some of the most important parts of their stories, and now she's taking control of her own narrative. So yes, let's dive right in. So yeah, um, she claims that the bird fell from the tree, but her mother, you know, catches her and she does come clean, and we get the detail. You know, yeah, th these are important birds. They they would tap messages. And later in the episode, you know, the bird, yeah, now she is the one able to interpret the, the bird as a sign of potential danger, and she's able to prevent it, prevent the danger, which, you know, Chula saw a bird the night that Maya's mother died, but now, you know, and, and yeah, was not able to, to prevent that. And, let's see, uh, yeah, I, I thought they did a really great job with the, the bird thing, because the moment that you see her, you know, take aim and even hit the bird, like, we're thinking, oh, wow, so she had some violence in her even as, as a child, that, you know, that is one of those things, you know, the, the obviously, she, she did not turn out quite that way, but they, they say that serial killers start by killing animals before they move on to people. You know, so it's like, oh, maybe she wanted to kill people even before her mother died, but we actually see her mother was able to, to keep that, you know, yeah, yeah, keep that from manifesting too much in, you know, and, and then with her mother gone, and once she was being raised to be a criminal, yeah, you know, we've seen her kill, you know, so, yeah. And, yeah, we see that, you know, her mother was a healer, and by the end of the episode, Maya embraces being a healer like her mother instead of a killer like her father and Fisk, and how her father and Fisk trained her to be a killer. We're closed. You're not closed. You're napping, you old billy goat. <laughs> and, yeah, so she asks about the sewing machine, and he just turns around and walks away. And, and yeah, like, for a second, it's like, you know, as she says, that's, this is how you treat paying customers, but no, you know, he, he kept it all those years, figuring that, you know, it was just a matter of time before she came. And, you know, yeah, you know, he can, Scully can be quite sweet. And, yeah, Chula, you know, bends over to pick up the, the letters, and then Fisk arrives, and, yeah, you know, the, one of the things about Fisk is, under the right circumstances, if he's talking to someone who doesn't know yet, yeah, he can be quite charming. He can be, you know charismatic and and appealing so yeah she she trusts him and you know we find out not long after that he took her you know um what's the word to uh hostage took her hostage and that's yeah then we see um zane just pushing past Biscuits, even though Biscuits is, you know, pointing out, you're, you know, you're not supposed to be here. This is for the vendors, not for the, you know, and yeah, they, they don't take him seriously. They, they, they're used to just muscling their way into places they don't belong. And in fact, you know, and, and it's also, you know, if they had to go through the, the process for vendor, for one thing I can imagine, they probably couldn't start the, start that process this late into there's probably a slightly longer process and it would also leave a bit more of a paper trail this is not new york they don't have as much of a presence here yeah 
and uh, you know because they think oh biscuits is you know a, a pushover he's able to warn henry and maya and yeah you know first he sends the the text that you know i'm i'm really glad he follows it up because yeah first he just texts maya hey where are you which like yeah you know she's not going to think that that's important and then he texts have you seen chula and bonnie they they're not here yet and they should be you know and then she just immediately gets yeah and and she looks and she sees the bird you know sign of potential danger and yeah um she she goes to chula's and you know the the spirit of her mother is there and you know takes her to the the this ethereal car and you know they're they're actually parked right across from the street where uncle ben and peter are and yeah you know very very sweet moment you know she tells her about the, the yeah the powers of her ancestors echoing through her very tense as we see the the build up to work uh, tense build up as the powwow starts I'm a bit of a mark for a pun. One of the one of Zane's men, or possibly Zane himself, one of them is wearing a T-shirt that says, "Ah, crap! What was the name of the um, the the ta Tamaha? You know, Tamaha is okay. You know, Oklahoma, very nice. And." I quite like the so the the guy leading the the powwow says please rise if you are able to very nice bit of inclusion not making people in wheelchairs feel like they're you know being disrespectful and yeah maya gets in by you know standing amongst this this group she looks really cool in the the sorry <sighs> I, I really appreciate her her costume, her superhero suit. You know, these various, um, let's see, I can't do them justice, but Screen Crush talks about the some of the different aspects of the, the suit. You know, I really appreciate how they manage to work in elements of the, the culture. And, you know, in, in general, the show has managed to work in a lot. They apparently worked with Choctaw, you know, on, on the script. And we again get this silent, you know, the only thing we can hear is the heartbeat, but now the heartbeat is able to sync with the drum beat. You know, she is completely, ah, what's the, the, the focus, completely focused there. And, yeah, very threatening when, you know, a box is lifted up to on top of the uh, motorhome or whatever it is uh, that Zane is on top of. And I quite like, so Henry asks Biscuits, do you have a weapon? And he says, I've got something better. And I will admit, at the time, I'm like, Biscuits, you're, you're adorable. You're, I, I love you, buddy. This might be the time for a weapon, but no, he was actually right. You know, it the the monster truck is so much more effective than a weapon. You know, imagine if she if he had had to try to shoot what was like four guys inside the car, but because he crushes it, that's that's it. You know, very very nicely done, and that is you know, yeah, he had access to a, a monster truck. Cars are his thing. You know, I I'm always quite appreciative of when they let someone be important in an action scene without sacrificing their character because it like if biscuits had been running around shooting people it would have felt completely divorced from all his other scenes and yeah maya goes into the the area and fisk comes out and Bonnie is now the interpreter because the uh, contact lens thing came out. 
you know, her rejecting Fisk's, yeah, influence. And the, the yeah, love the, the bit where she says, I'm their legacy, not yours. You know, he's doing this thing of, that, that sadly many white men have done of trying to take control of a non-white group of people by adopting someone and then teaching them his ways instead of allowing them to learn their own. And yeah, the the line is literally lined up. The the Maya's line and she shares her powers with both Bonnie and Chula. Did not expect to see Chula kicking ass this season, but yeah, I mean, basically, she got superpowers to match her attitude. You know, she's always been a very tough person, so... Or, at the very least, since the, the death of Maya's mother. And... <laughs> Henry takes out Zane. You know, love the little wink. And, you know, oh, fireworks. <laughs> very nicely done. That actually is, you know, the Disney Plus... You know, the, there's like one line about the episode. There are fire, you know, fireworks at the the powwow. You know, and and yeah, you know, when I read that, I was like, oh no, are they gonna b try to blow up? You know, and yeah, it was that very nicely done. And yeah, so Maya, you know, goes into Fisk's trauma when when he was child, unable to stop his father from hitting his mother, and you know, yeah, tries to get him to, to let go of his pain. And, you know, I, yeah, I absolutely love when a, a situation like this is resolved with empathy instead of violence. Because, yeah, you know, we know this about Fisk. He wasn't born evil. He was broken by certain events in his life. And yeah, very very sweet. You know, I I love biscuits. Yeah, he he really what was it. Let's see, the it was a bit, it was biscuits' father who who loved peaches so much that he ran and you know yeah, but but ass naked. You know the yeah for for peaches, biscuits. He's not naked, but he's got this same energy kind of you know. He's like ah you know, and we like attack them and just. Yeah, very, very adorable. And yeah, Maya joins them. Very sweet. And yeah, the post credit scene. So if you don't, if this is your final warning, if you did not already, if you didn't know, you know, that there was one, please pause this video and then, you know, watch the post credit scene and, and or mid credits, whatever. It's, you know, I can imagine some people missed it. And then unpause this video. So, yeah, that was friggin' awesome. Um, Fisk is going to run for mayor of New York, which, you know, I, that had already, we, we already knew that that was going to be part of the, the plot of Daredevil Born Again. But, yeah, the, the you know, up until this point in this season, Fisk has been trying to get Maya back. And now he's basically accepted that's not going to happen. So he's going to turn all this passion towards a new goal. And, and it's that. And we see, sadly, you know, mainstream media, as has been the case a number of times in reality, you know, really helping, unwittingly, mostly, helping and, and you know, someone do evil. Again, I don't think he's an evil individual, but him being mayor is, is bad, and, and, you know, they, like, they practically, you know, ah, we, d we need someone, we, we need, like, a, a big, bald guy who likes wearing white suits, um, it would be great if his name had the initials WF, maybe he liked cufflinks, uh, if they had some kind of special significance to him personally, uh, um, Maybe a maybe a, a will more fish so, something along those lines that would really you know like they're literally saying oh we need a fighter we need a brawler you know he doesn't have to have joined the fight yet there's still time you know he he would have a really good chance like 
I love when comics do this. I just like really outline what's, yeah, you know, this is what's going to happen here. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, unconfirmed yet if there will be a season two. They, they kind of, you know, they never promised more than one season. So, yeah, I found this quite satisfying. Um, I will be doing the review shortly. Right, I guess I'll just very briefly, so, let's see. Um, okay, so, so one negative IMDb user reviewers express frustration that the show is both really marvelly and adult, and they thought that it doesn't really work to have both, and... I think the Wow. Okay, so this person says I don't understand why Echo needs a gun if she has powers. Isn't that the point of having powers? The Punisher doesn't have powers, but guns are kind of his thing. I mean, the powers are not the most like it's not that much of like a an attack thing it's you know she can she can heal she can perceive warnings yeah okay um some yeah some people just looking for excuses to not like it yeah what I, oh I, I love this i love when someone acts like it's a chris okay so this person just said this is not the only thing, but they say, so Maya's ancestors are somehow part of her? Yes, they are. You're literally just describing, like, this is, what is that, you know, describing what's on screen, cliche, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, they, they are. It's, it's not a, it's not a criticism to just, you know, they, I, I guess this guy wants to write for Marvel because, uh, so that just happened. And let's see them. Um, okay, yeah, this one, one person says they felt this finale was too short. I wouldn't have minded if it was longer. And I think... Yeah, yeah, one one person, yeah, yeah, uh, they go on to say, you know, would Fisk really try to blow up the powwow, but then they go on to say, I think they were trying to display how ruthless he is, and how, due to his childhood traumas, he acts like a child when he doesn't get what he wants. And... I think... Yeah, and, and they go on to say, I'm still so confused what that power is and if it'll ever be explained. I I can appreciate that. I the the Yeah, I I don't know. I I think for me personally I think it was okay, but I I can understand why some people would want more. And One person says, Maya ended up defeating Kingpin sorta in the end, so the fight was pointless. A fight is pointless if one of the people wins? I mean, I appreciate that they put that so early in the review. I, I now am fully aware I have absolutely no reason to go and continue reading. Just, like... I think it might have behooved the person to try to figure out an actual argument before they started just writing nonsense. <laughs>